Hey, what's up? Hello, everyone. Welcome into Fantasy Film Ball, the show where we turn movies into sports and sports into something we don't talk about here. My name is Matt. My name is Dill, and we are back again with another waiver draft here on the channel, and this time is for the month of January. So I figured let's just dive right into this, look at our leaderboards, and see if there's any trades that are going to happen, if there's any waivers that are going to happen, you know, all the fun stuff that we always do here. So in first place, and you know, I got to gloat a little bit. I am in the lead. I have our points leader, Killers of the Flower Moon, with 802 points. American Fiction, Zone of Interest, May, December, all around 400 plus. I'm kind of feeling similar to like the Fablemans, Power of the Dog, Irishman, and the early front runner, but I don't feel good about staying number one for the whole season. But we'll have to really see who may come up to steal the number one spot at the moment. I currently have 2,830 points. Then I'm currently in second place. And Dylan, you got to give yourself some credit. You have three very likely best picture nominees right now. So that's going to keep you going strong, even without an Oppenheimer. Uh, on the other hand, I currently am being kept afloat by Barbie and Maestro. Barbie with 713 points and Maestro coming up behind with 505. But really, after that, my team kind of takes a bit of a nosedive with all of us strangers doing pretty well but being a fringe contender at best. The Boy and the Heron kind of pulling a little bit of weight currently with 208 points. And then after that, my team really just absolutely goes to shit. <laughs> so I'm not feeling too great, even though my top two picks are really doing a good job. Everything else is kind of just along for the ride. And then Arno is in third place right now. How are you doing today, Arno? I'm satisfied right now being third. I'm moving up since I was fifth last game, right? And I feel like I'm pretty stable within that like four, fourth, third, second spot. Probably going to stay around that third spot, I think. And I really think that this game comes down to whoever has Oppenheimer, Barbie, Killers, and Poor Things on their team. And it's kind of spread evenly. Whereas, uh, unfortunately for you two, Justin and Austin, I don't know if you guys have much potential beyond sixth and fifth place because you don't have one of those four tenth poles right now as far as points go. The only way my team could really rise even further right now is if Poor Things is a major breakout, not just at Globes, but winds up being major technical category winners. And then, you know, like guaranteed wins, like for actress, director, and picture. Even then, I don't think I, it'll be enough to get me to first place, but maybe second. I will say you also have Anatomy of a Fall, which has given you a pretty big boost as well. And yeah, you're totally right. Poor Things is just a tent pull. What's happening this year, it's very similar to like 2019, where there was about four films that just got nominations in every category, every single place. And the same thing is happening this year, where it's just those same four movies show up over and over and over again. It makes for a little bit of an unbalanced game, is what I'm going to say. I much prefer the years where every film is kind of sporadically nominated here and there. Like last year was pretty balanced outside of everything ever all at once. Anyways, unfortunately, uh, Jonathan, the film drunk, he is not here today as he is sick. So uh, we will be skipping over him, but he is coming up in fourth place. I mean, he has the second highest film on his team, the aforementioned Oppenheimer, which has about 745 points. I mean, he's hot on Arno's tail right now. It's about 30 points behind him. It'll be like neck and neck for these next few weeks. And and I mean, his trade to get 20 Days in Mario Pool made both the documentary and international shortlist. So there's more potential for points with that film there. And then in fifth place, we have Justin, brother bro. Welcome in, Justin. You've got the holdovers really holding up your team right now. That is your big best picture contender. But who knows, maybe some miracle will happen with Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Well, I think we kind of know the fate of Spider-Verse at this point. You oh, know, it didn't. God. I mean... It it's get, it's gotten some shortlist mentions. It's done like a little bit better than it could have, but it's definitely not like maxing out what it could have done. Maybe in a less crowded year, I still think if this year was less crowded, we could see a universe where it gets nominated. Maybe next film it could happen. Air, I I don't I don't think it's gonna get any nominations at the Oscars. It could get screenplay, I suppose. Not too much hope for getting into like the top of Among Us. I think that Air could be the solo screenplay nomination this year. Yeah, that's possible. But let's see. Is, is it is it in? It's an adapted. And Barbie just Original. moved to 
Oh, it's an, it's original. an original. That's right. Yeah. It's the less crowded category. I guess it could be. I have to check because of when Barbie moved. I might have slipped it up in there. I have to ask about Spider-Verse. Like back in, in May, June, when that first premiered, every pundit was riding on like, this is happening for the Oscars. Was mm -hmm. that just like recency bias, do you think? And everyone was just hyping it up because it was the biggest thing at that moment? Or was there like actually something to that at the time that kind of just vanished later on? I feel like it's more of the second thing. People felt like young people drove everything ever all at once to the place where it got like it somehow resonated with these Oscar voters who don't have much in common with like the Gen Z people or like the millennials that it felt it like it, that movie was made for. And I think Spider-Verse was their movie of the year, like instantly when it came out. And I think what couldn't make it translate was the critics seemed to just kind of forget about it. If there was like actors in it or people to go along and secure it nominations somewhere, if it, you know, if it wasn't an animated film, we would have like a team of actors and an ensemble like campaigning. That's a very valuable piece of your Oscar campaign that mm -hmm. animated movies just don't have. It's just Completely you true. Know, an unfortunate animated film victim. In a way, I almost think that Barbie is the reason why Spider-Verse is not happening because it did you know, steal a that lot of crowd. Yeah. And, and specifically that crowd you were talking about, that Gen Z group that now has the power to campaign their favorite films into Best Picture. They went all in for Barbie and Spider-Verse kind of got left behind. And six currently we have Austin where he will have our first waiver pick today due to skipping last month. And I'm still sad that I turned down the May December Past Lives deal. Obviously in hindsight, uh, it was pretty clear which one was more worthy. I just didn't think Past Lives would do as great as did it at the Globes. How do you feel about your team overall? And I mean, don't spoil your waiver pick today, but how do you feel about going into waivers? Well, it's funny because I remember back during the draft, I said the one thing I want this year is just to have one Best Picture nominee, and I'm getting my wish because Past Lives is looking pretty good right now. But it is. the monkey's the monkey's paw is curling because my other nine picks are looking kind of dog shit right now. Color Purple, the the wheels have fallen off that train, just ridiculous. Yeah. Who knows what the Brutal. hell Origins doing? The one that hurts me the most, my baby, the deepest breath, didn't make the short list for documentary, <laughs> so. Yeah. Not looking great. I'm just going to do what I can to avoid last place at this point. I'll kick things off today saying that um, Eternal Memory did make the doc shortlist available. Uh, Priscilla, maybe if you believe in some actress hype. And then um, my second waiver priority is also open for swapping if to go to with one of these movies to potentially you know, move up a little bit. So I guess I'll start things off if anyone's interested, but feel free to say other movies if no one is interested. Well, you know, Dylan, you said you were disappointed that you didn't take the May-December past live trade. We did offer May December for color purple. That's still on the table. Yeah, <laughs> I I th I think I'm gonna pass on that one right now. Even though um Ooh. color purple, I, I still think it did have a shot until these stuff started coming out. But now I I think it kind of is um dropping under the wayside. Honestly, I think they're pretty even right now. The only thing is that like May December currently has more points. And I don't think either of them is going to get that many more. I mean, I, I I have made a simple right now for two or three Oscars, Melton Screenplay and maybe more. And Color Purple, I think, is Brooks and Costumes. Yeah, see, I just have May December for screenplay and more. I have Melton missing. Hater, you're just like the Baptist. Oh, is he really going to get in just on Golden Globe Critics' Choice? Well, I will verbally offer it here in the video, even though I know the answer. Matt, uh, Priscilla, Napoleon, how do you feel about that today? We talked about it a few days ago, and I was down. But then I redid my predictions, and I went, oh, I have Napoleon getting three Oscar nominations. And so with that point potential, like, I'm going to have to pass. It's pretty close, though, because like even with all of those nominations napoleon won't be getting that many extra points it's currently at 104 points even with three nominations it's barely gonna ride past 160 i'm, I'm gonna stick with it anyone else have anything that they want to offer here in this trade period let me think i i have to look through what i've got because uh, if Jonathan else was here has. i would have probably have offered him something for creator or for iron claw but uh, sadly, uh, he's feeling under the weather, so yeah. that will have to wait till February. I would have thought about offering him something for Saltburn, but I would have I would have considered all of us strangers for Saltburn. Wow, you just really want to get off strangers, which I, I like. I like. It's not even like I I I mean strangers 
is dead, especially now that Barbie isn't adapted. Like it's one shot was getting a screenplay nomination, which is now impossible. Strangers is dead, but we have one of yeah. some of these films every year where they get zero Oscar nominations, but they still get to like 400 or 500. And I and feel like this is like yeah. a poster child for that. Well, because BAFTA is going to go strong for all of us strangers which is the one chance that it has to get back into that best picture conversation if it makes BAFTA's top five which it very well could then we could potentially see that as a last minute push especially if it gets into the best picture five at BAFTA over something like Anatomy of a Fall I might okay, have okay. a trade proposal Justin what do you think about Maestro for the holdovers hmm oh wow that's a huge trade they're like dead I don't know this. points right now they are dead even say, in points. Seem... So it's just banking on the rest of the year. I was going to say they seem exactly the same. I think that Divine Joy Randolph is probably going to win. Not even probably. She's locked. Holderverse is also looking very good for original screenplay right now. Yes. Yes, yeah, it is. That's true. Yeah, I'll, I'll mm -hmm. stick with it. But I, I like the, you know, it's it's it was worth considering. It wasn't... It it's it's an audacious thing. trade, you know. Yes. That was. It's not like I'm offering like, ooh, do you? How about the boy and the heron? Yeah, something that I'm holders. obviously gonna deny. Yeah, yeah absolutely down. not. I yeah. mean, that said, I depending on where you're at with Spider Verse, what do you think about Boy and the Heron for Spider Verse? Mm, I don't think I would do that. I think Spider Verse okay. is gonna win. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Smart, I think smart, so smart. too. I just wanted to see if you were one of those people that was out oh, there yeah. being like... If I had ooh. like a hunch about the boy yeah. and the heron, yeah. Some people are like that. As much as it would be cool for Miyazaki to win one, it's not happening. Maybe next time. Now I'm good. <laughs> well, back to you, Austin. Waivers, first priority. Like I said before, I feel like there's a few things that you could drop, but you're, what you're picking up is probably pretty clear. Yeah, it's funny because I almost used my waiver last month on a film, but I decided I'll just wait take the first priority next month and see like what does well at the Globes, at the Critics' Choice. And it turns out the film that I would have taken ended up doing very well at the Globes, got into foreign language film and best actress for Alma Foisty, and that's Fallen Leaves. I'm definitely picking that up. I haven't seen it yet, but I am hoping to this week. And I could drop the bike riders, but I think I'll wait one more month. And I think Boys in the Boat, like is it's doing nothing. Like we pretty much knew it was doing nothing all along. So Let's just throw that in the trash and get Fallen Leaves in there. The boys have sunk the boat and Fallen Leaves is in. Smart choices there all around. That brings it to me. And I have like a list of like nine movies I'm looking at. And I don't think any of them really stand up compared to the other ones. Um, before I make my pick here, I guess it's a more question from Matt and Arno. For the Crick's points, that's coming from Metacritic, right? Yes. I guess I'm going to be dropping Little Mermaid. My hope was maybe it could make a short list for like visual effects, song maybe, could be a surprise costume nomination. But even if it gets that, I still don't think uh, it's going to do much of anything else. So that will be the one I finally drop off my team here. Uh, continuing the theme of stuff sinking into the ocean and uh, pick up a movie. Um, I guess let's keep this theme going, uh, sinking into the ocean with Godzilla minus one. Good I don't pick. love it. I don't think it has that high of a ceiling, but if it can win a few uh, visual effects stuff throughout various critics groups and then get the Oscar nomination, could find its way to like 130, 140 overall points. I think that there is a definite world where if that gets nominated for visual effects, it could become the front runner over the creator just based on the buzz around the film. There's other movies I think that may score more, but... Uh, I like having movies that I like actually watch for my team and Godzilla's when I watch and when I really like. So I, I feel good about it here. I'd like to ask, given that Godzilla minus one is a Japanese film, do you guys think that it's actually realistic? I know it made the short list, but it's actually realistic that this can be nominated and win the category over films from American or English language country studios. I don't remember the last time that an award for visual effects was given to a film from a foreign country. Yeah, well, that's, I'm, I'm... there wouldn't be a time that that's happened. But I mean, when was the last time that we had a blockbuster of this magnitude from a different country other than RRR, which probably Godzilla would not be as big right now without the way that uh, distributors saw that Western audiences responded to RRR. I think it's one of those RRR walked so Godzilla could run. Mm. We've never seen a case exactly like this. Um, and there's a great narrative around it. The narrative is really 
just that they did this with such a small budget and it still rivals or exceeds what Hollywood films are doing. I'm not really of the belief that it can win, but I think there's a small shot and looking at other stuff here, it's kind of one of the few things I feel like can continue to make points while a lot of these other options do have more points at the moment. Just I think they're kind of capped off uh, for their totals. Justin, it's over to you. What are you looking at this month? I think I went from faux to the collaboration. Uh, that wasn't a, a better trade. So <laughs> I'm going to just go again with Indiana Jones in hopes that it gets nice. two nominations um, against yeah. my actual hopes for the movie. I do believe it's getting one. It's just will it add score to that as well? I think visual effects is almost guaranteed for that movie. Just this branch loves de-aging. And this movie has de aging. You put it in the bake off, and it made the short list, so it gets that bake off. I I think it's it's pretty much in there. I don't think it has a shot to win, but for that number five yeah. slot, Disney's usually good at getting one, if not two, movies in. So I think and we can't big. underestimate the score either. I mean, mm -hmm. it might it might even be equal. Uh, who knows? The branch seems to be very willing to go out on a limb for. John Williams, no matter what, yeah, it's it's kind of a, no matter how many times or, those last two hmm. slots are really open. It being up in the air, like there could be many possibilities. We could, like I can see myself get, predicting two out of five right, and they don't care how many That's... times he recycles the theme, right? Because it's three three Star Wars films in a row, and I don't know how many in total. I should look that up. Yeah, the interesting thing looking through the score category is that the only person who has gotten a nomination for a sequel score since like the 90s outside of the return of the king for howard shore that's the only other exception but john williams is the only person who gets nominated for sequels no one hmm. else since like It'll be hans zimmer for dune part two probably i don't think so oh i think it's, you don't think so <laughs> i i really am riding with this that like you don't get nominated for sequels unless you're John Williams. But Hans Zimmer so, so is starting also... to get to that level. But he but... has done sequels in the past that haven't been nominated. I guess the other thing is Spider-Verse is a sequel. You could say it uh, that that could happen for the next film for Spider-Verse if this one gets nominated. Yeah. Or they just snub Pemberton like they always do. They might that's just, yeah, they I might believe just they could. <laughs> they could. Hate but that said, it looks like there's a solid four for score right now. I'd be really shocked if they left Pemberton off. I wouldn't be shocked. I'd just be like, I mean, ah, either. <laughs> there it is I mean, again. We yeah, have Pinocchio. I, I didn't even get nominated last year. They just won't do Pemberton unless he is in just something that's undeniable that needs that critic sweeper, which I mean, I don't think Across the Spider-Verse has been that so far in score. But talking about uh, leaving off, it's Arno's time now. What movie will he leave off his roster to pick up a new one? So Jonathan was before me, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, but, uh, and John's skipping. He told me he's not going to drop anything. He's taking the top waiver priority next month. Yeah, I'm skipping too. Oh, wow. Ooh. Okay, so that brings it to me. I feel like I should skip because there's nothing that's jumping out to me as like, a, oh my God, I need that on my team. That's why I skipped. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm looking at my team right now and I've got two films that are under 100 points, and neither of those films is passing 100 points. Chicken Run, Sound of Freedom, they're both dead. I, I want my whole team to be over 100 points. I think that'd be really neat. It'd just look really nice all together there. So I do have to do a, a waiver drop this month. I think I'm going to drop Sound of Freedom. Hoorah. Um, yeah, I finally saw it. It's about uh, time. And I think I'm going to pick up my uh, my wild card for best animated feature. I'm going to go with Robot Dreams. Oh, that's there a good go. one. And I just watched it the other day, and it's it's very good. And I, I really hope it sneaks in there in that fifth slot or something. Got those critic nominations that it needs to be that kind of push. I like how you're stacking animated movies for what could be that potential fifth slot. Maybe it's Chicken Run. Maybe it's another Netflix movie. Maybe oh, it's Robot me. Dreams. I'm Maybe dropping wish. Chicken Run next month. If I could have done both this month, I would have. Chicken Run is dead, 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 mm. dead. I like your attack of getting rid of these low scoring movies because that's kind of where I've been at since I uh, felt like I drafted kind of well. I didn't really have many like duds. So like I got rid of Bob Marley and I was just kind of saying like, I have movies that are all around 100 plus. What do I really do? So now I'm like, okay, let's get rid of some of these lower ones and get some stuff. Maybe I only gain like 30 points, but... 330 points is still close to a good amount of a 
whole extra like better movie. All right. So that brings us to the end of this month's waiver draft. I want to thank everyone for being here again. I always enjoy these because regardless if there's much updates with the game, because this month we had two skips, no trades. It's always fun talking with everyone and just, you know, getting a feel for the update of the race because each time we talk, movies have more points. Some stuff has risen the game. Some stuff has just dropped off a cliff entirely. But uh, for everyone out there, consider dropping a like, a subscription, or comment down below. If you don't like some of our waiver pickups, stuff that we miss, we always like hearing that and come back for our February waiver in about, you know, three weeks. It will be our last waivers of this season. Thank you so much for watching. As always, my name is Matt. My name is Dill, and this is Fancy Film Ball.